Bronny, Bron Bron, LeBron James Jr. declared for the 2024 draft. I imagine that he already has a spot on the Lakers. I imagine that was probably part of the deal with Jeannie Buss that I will stay provided that you um, you draft my child so I can play with my child. And uh, he said, I've had a year with some ups and downs, but all added to growth for me as a man, a student, and an athlete. I want to know what classes he went to. Did you go to class with LeBron James Jr.? I want to know. <laughs> uh, he said, I've made the decision to enter the NBA draft while maintaining my college eligibility and will also be entering the NCAA transfer portal. So exactly. he's doing both. I appreciate that. Thank you, USC, for an amazing freshman year. As always, thankful for my family, friends, doctors, athletic trainers, fans, and for the support. He's 19. He had cardiac arrest. Uh, I'm not going to say anything negative about Bronny. This is not a conversation about Bronny. We will not talk about children. Well, y'all can do what y'all want. I am not. I think he's a lovely human being uh, pursuing his dreams. Um, But it does speak a little to kind of the culture that we're in right now that uh, he is declaring for the NBA draft. But um, thoughts and prayers. He's keeping his options open. This is this is like when you holler at one cute girl in the club but you still want to see if there's another girl. He know he can go to another school and play in college, but just in case somebody want me in the NBA, let me go and see what's happening over there while maintaining his college eligibility. So it's not like he need an official agent anyway. His daddy's friend is Rich Paul. His daddy's agent is his dad's best friend. So that's practically your uncle your whole life anyway. Um, Uh, Also, he... um... A lot of kids do this. Like he's not he's not alone. Um, a lot of kids will use this to go to the draft to find out what they need to work on. So then they go back to okay. school to another program because now all these kids transferring. This transfer portal is crazy right now. You don't have to wait a year. So kids are kind of leaving to go find a better situation immediately. And so he may go to somewhere else and be like, I can play more and I can work on, say, my jump shot or whatever they tell me I need to work on. Let me ask you, um, Roderick does balls in and balls are balls deep, deep. balls deep in the balls yeah. uh, sports on the black guy who tips. You know, um, as I was I was remarking, first of all, we got the NIL deals. So Angel Reese is like, I got a two million dollar NIL deal. Caitlin Clark had a one million dollar NIL deal. LeBron James, Bronny. $5.9 million this freshman was making on his is the highest value. And Tom Brady, I think, has something to do with that, uh, you know, as well. But they don't have to play. The the elite athletes don't really need to go to the NBA. And now with the portal, you can transfer. So coaches now, you you can't abuse these kids verbally like you used to and do and get away with it because a kid could be like, um, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm going. Yeah. How, you how can't even make them. That? You can't even make them play defense on Caitlin Clark for forty minutes, and then have them stay. <laughs> they'll they'll oh, yeah, be the like, you know Caitlin what, I'm out. Up. Yeah, she yeah. She, she did. She did they leave. Yeah. yeah she wow. Play. I don't ally think this is good, Shout out to her. She's an ally. She's an ally. That's yeah, hilarious. She took them but... buckets so that the black women on the team didn't have to take them buckets. It was <laughs> she took them all to the oh, head boy. and. She's an accomplice. I appreciate her. She spoke up for oh her God. black teammates on Saturday. And it took 41 of them things to the grill on Monday. I said, <laughs> you a real one. Angels hurt. I need to let <sighs> Caitlin score on me forever. When she turned around and did angels. this move, she <laughs> needed to shrug towards up. the kid. Like, I don't hands know up. what y'all, y'all don't want to switch. Do? So, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so but, I don't, but, I don't, I don't like it. I don't think this is good. It, it, what it is teaching, yeah, because you you don't have to sit in anything, and there's no penalty. Like, oh, I don't like how you talk to me. I'm going to the next. It's team. a catch uh, twenty. Uh, it's a catch twenty two, right? Because the reason this correction has happened is because of the manipulation of the NCAA and the the uh, uh, unchecked power of coaches. And, and schools over kids, you know, where we used to have mm-hmm. actual abusive situations and there was nothing you could do about it. You know, schools had to approve your transfer. So you could have teams that like completely wreck people's careers out of vindictiveness. And then they're like, and you can't go nowhere. And if you do go somewhere, you're going to have to wait one or two years before you can even get over there. 
Um, and so what happened is the NCAA, with the pressure of the of of the government on them, has basically just put their hands up like they were uh, defending Caitlin Clark and said, "Y'all do what y'all want to do." NIL is unregulated, which is one of the reasons that I think the kids still look towards the pros because a pro contract is a contract. This NIL stuff, man, some of these kids not getting their money. No one's talking about that. Uh, some of these, some of this stuff is falling through. Florida, uh, there was like a, a school in Florida that promised all this money and then at the last second said, we ain't got it. You know, so like that's not necessarily there at the school. Yeah. So that's not, not necessarily like the NIL money is cool if you get it and if it's consistent, but things change so fast on that front. Um, you're right, though. Bronny comes from money. He going to be all right no matter what happens to him, which almost makes the dream of the NBA stuff hard for him. It's got to be more fervent, right? It's got he probably more passionate about it because he's like, it's all about reputation. It's all about right. pleasing my dad, all the pressure the society's put on me to be a failure or a success. It's yeah. like for him, it, it ain't even just I got to make it out the hood. It's like this is all y'all know me for is this. I feel like basketball is the toughest sport to break it in as a junior, mm -hmm. like in the mm. shadow of the greatness. I think baseball is the easiest. I don't know nothing about hockey. Football, it's 50-50. You've seen the sons of some players do well, like Marvin Harrison Jr. about to come right. into the league, probably first round pick. But I just think it's something about basketball where if your daddy really good at basketball, that's tougher than coming out the hood yep. to play. Yep. You need a sorry do daddy. Well. You right. do. LeBron, he got both parents. You already, mm -hmm. that's like strike one, strike two. Both parents, mm -hmm. and they love you. Ugh. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> you're, Paying you're all your shot. games. Yeah. <laughs> that, that part, there's a thirst in that dog that you have to dig deeper to find. I'm not saying Bronny doesn't have it, but I'm right. saying that's definitely now, a that being much said, bigger mountain to climb. In the last 10 to 15 years, though, especially in, in football at quarterback and in basketball too, there's a lot of nepotism and a lot of like getting into the right stream. Like if you can kind of get in early, they can kind of get you to the right coaches and stuff. The body's going to come into play. It's never going to be a complete nepotism, nepotism thing, but like, there's a reason that you're going to have like a Steph Curry and Seth Curry in the NBA, you know, Austin Rivers, yeah, like you get access to coaches, programs, stuff that you normally don't get with the AAU circuit and the way like kids are brands now by the time they're 15. Like it's it's a different game that's being played where it's not necessarily how we came up, which was like you either get a wicked jump shot or you sell crack rock. That's how you get out the hood. Like a lot of these kids, these Jalen's is a lot, a lot of light skinned Jalen's coming into the league where it's like one daddy was an athlete. Well, you know, one parent was an athlete and one parent was, you know, the white lady that met him and boom, they, they, they in the league too. Cause they know the right people. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a thing though, where if you're going to have a son, that's good. Then like both of you can't be legends. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like Dale Curry is amazing, but Steph Curry is the elevation of that you know you look at say like kobe's dad who the joe bryant right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was a pro played well mm -hmm. but then kobe was uh, uh. yeah like you almost need a daddy that's just i right, so he can be yeah home that, i agree yeah. yeah like the and legend so thing no is too much for a couple yeah. months yeah yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just like tim hardaway you. jr is is a good example of like his daddy was a beast tim hardaway getting a check in the nba for the last eight years and we, you know, like no pressure on him to be special. Bronny's not going to have that. He's not going to be able to be like a role player that we respect. It's going to be like, yeah, your daddy, though. Uh. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a crop coming up, you know, um, Anthony um, Carmelo's son. Mm -hmm. You got Gilbert Arenas, his daughter and his son, Kenyon Martin's son. There, I mean, there's like so many. Shaq's daughter. Scotty Pippen's so son. Scotty Pippen's son. The twins, well, Matt Barnes, daughter. who that has to be really interesting because the twins no, she's in now the, um they're being coached, I think, by Derek Fisher, who's with yeah. their mama, and Matt Barnes, who whipped his ass, um, jumped over a fence and whipped his right. ass. 
those are his twins they're playing for the man whose ass he whipped it's mm-hmm. it's a lot going on it's a lot going on in sports yeah, like, see, like, like see the right here i would pick ron harper's son out of everybody you've named ron mm-hmm. harper's son has an opportunity to have that dell and steph curry mm-hmm. dynamic ron harper was solid respected played with a lot of good players so he can just give all that wisdom to his son i bet you it's, if, I, if i had to pick one Right. It's one you think that's the one that's going to Okay, we, we have and a of chance. And Ron was great, but he's not. he didn't make it to the Hall of Fame. And of course, Carmelo we're trying, going to the Hall. We're trying to pick, like, people that are on an echelon that no one reaches. So, like, more than likely, everyone we name going to be okay to bad. Just because that's the nature <laughs> of sports. Like, the odds of any of them being great is extremely low. Um, and so, we, like... There shouldn't be any shame attached to you are LeBron's son and you just all right. But I, I just don't think we live in a world where they're going to let him be all right and it not be a problem. And honestly, I don't think he want to play on his daddy team. That sounds terrible. Ooh. I love my oh. daddy and I wouldn't want to play on the same team as him, man. Are we, what, we going to the club Austin, together? Austin we, Rivers <sighs> talked about that all the time with the Sixers playing for his, when his daddy was the coach. Or Doc Rivers was the coach. Yeah, yeah, I don't, and then you know they're gonna ask LeBron halfway through the season, you gonna trade your son because they ask him every year about every other teammate he done had. Like, yeah, maybe your son the problem. Well, we going into the all star break, it's looking like the trade deadline coming up. Like, you don't need that kind of pressure if you Bron. Smiles and says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing 